Hey everybody, it's Mr. Mott. What we're going to do is go through uh, this idea about bonding and, uh, and learning about this new idea called electronegativity. All right. So this word electronegativity um, describes how strong or how much an, an atom wants to pull electrons towards itself in a bond. All right. So um, there is a general trend on our periodic table as shown by these arrows here that when we go from left to right, the electronegativity increases, um, and as we go up and to the right, the electronegativity increases. So that's the general trend on our periodic table. One thing really to mention right away is that these elements in this far right-hand group, um, they don't uh, typically uh, bond with other elements, um, and so they actually have zero electronegativity. Uh, so um, we want to understand that trend. We also want to know where the metals are versus the non-metals. And there's kind of a dividing line um, that we can highlight um, on here. And it's a little bit of a staircase. And it's going to separate your metals versus your non-metals. The only exception would be hydrogen. So hydrogen is a non-metal. Um, and uh, the ones that are to the right, these are all your non-metals to the right of that staircase. All right. Um, and then your metals are going to be to the left. Again, the only exception to the non-metal uh, and staircase rule is hydrogen, which is a non-metal, but uh, it is over on the left-hand side. All right? So um, you want to be get familiar with sort of where the elements are, and as we do more of these, you'll, you will. Um, first example that we're going to look at are going to be what if a metal and a non-metal bonded, um, such as Na bonding with Cl. So Na is your metal, and it's located on the left-hand side, number 11, on our periodic table. Um, Cl is number 17, and it's located on the right-hand side of our periodic table, number 17 there. So uh, a metal versus a non-metal, um, we can see from the trend that chlorine is further to the right on our periodic table. So chlorine is more electronegative, so therefore it has the stronger pull in the electrons. All right. So now when we think about the general trend from left to right, the electronegativity increases. Um, the, uh, there is such a big difference in the electronegativity between these two elements that electrons are actually, they're being transferred here. Okay. And so what ends up happening is that, uh, is that chlorine is so much stronger, it gets in this tug of war for electrons with sodium, that chlorine actually takes an electron away from sodium. So we call that an ionic bond, okay? We call that an ionic bond. And so what we want to remember about that term ion, an ion is a charged atom. So what happens is when chlorine um, when chlorine takes an electron away, because remember it has the stronger pull, um, it, when it takes an electron away, it now becomes has a negative charge. And then sodium now lost a negative, lost a, a negative electron, so it becomes positive. So what ends up happening is that these, um, the sodium and the chlorine, they become ions, they become charged atoms. And it's that positive-negative attraction which keeps them together. All right. Um, next, we're going to look at what happens when when nonmetals bond. And here we have uh, we have hydrogen and oxygen being two different nonmetals. Um, looking at our periodic table, oxygen is number eight. It's further to the right than hydrogen, which is way on the left. So oxygen is going to have the stronger pull between those two. Um, between those two atoms. Now, what's going to happen is that these electrons that are going to be shared, but because th they have a difference in their electronegativity, the electrons are going to be shared unequally. So the electrons are shared unequally. And the example I always use is that if when I was learning to drive, I would borrow my mom's or my dad's car uh, a little bit here and there, but for the most part, they drove the car. So that's that's an example of unequal sharing. All right. So between hydrogen and oxygen, they're sharing these electrons unequally, and oxygen is going to have it more of the time. 
So what we say is that um, is that the type of bond is an unequal or sometimes called polar covalent. So unequal or polar covalent bond. And that word covalent has to do with which electrons are involved in the bonding. Okay? Um, so what ends up happening is that we have uh, um, the covalent, co meaning with, so they're sharing the electrons together with each other, um, and the valent electrons are the outside electrons that are involved in bonding. Not all electrons are involved in bonding. So that's, the, that's how we come up with those two terms. Um, and then as far as the atom, or far, as far as the bond on here, um, we assign um, oxygen a partial negative charge. This symbol is a lowercase delta, and it means partial. And so it, because oxygen has the electrons more of the time because it's more electronegative, it's a little bit more negative. And then hydrogen is a little bit more positive because of the, um, because of the, uh, it has the electrons less of the time between those. All right. When we're dealing with the same metal, they have the same pull towards each other. So we could either say in terms of the element with the stronger pull, we could say neither, or you could say hydrogen. I think both are acceptable. Um, there, in terms of the electrons that are being shared in this bond, they're going to be shared equally. So the hydrogen on the left has the same, has the electrons the same amount of time as the electrons on the right. So if they're being shared equally, we call this an equal uh, covalent bond. Okay, this is also called a nonpolar covalent bond as well. They're called both things. All right. So it's important that we understand the electronegativity difference between um, elements in a bond. They tell us how the electrons are being shared, um, either how they're being shared or how they're being transferred between two atoms. Um, what we then do is that we look at what's going on between molecules. So we look at one individual molecule, assign the type of bonds and charges like we have here, um, and then we look at the bonds that um, exist between them. So these type of bonds that we were referring to here, um, these type of bonds are actually called intramolecular bonds. And it's the first step into understanding some big scale properties is looking at the intramolecular bonds within a molecule. Then we start looking at the intermolecular bonds afterwards. All right, and that'll be in our next video. Thanks for watching.